information leaflet is on my website. They will go and read it, and on your website you will also have another tab, which we didn't mention yesterday, saying benefits or why go private, or benefits of private care. Visitors will see that, and they'll they click on the button, it's like, well, you get seen by the consultant rather than training, or, and then on that page, of course, put down the basic reasons why would somebody want to be seen by you privately, or anyone privately. But would you be as blunt as saying seen by the consultant every time rather than a registrar or a training doctor yeah. or member of the um, Continu uh, Continuity of care. Well, continuity of care is there in the NHS as well. But I mean, I, would, I put it, well, why should somebody see you privately? Well, first off, because I, because you will see the patient yourself from start to finish their treatment at every, and at every step in between. Um, you have a team of specialists who, know, who, specialist nurses and physios who are used to looking after patients with joint surgery or these problems. Does that not count? Does that not, does that not, that, that bit about the specialist team, then, does that not apply to the NHS? Yeah, it does. So can you, I mean, can you differentiate in that way and say but, you but come and see me privately? Yeah, but you're not saying that, you're not, but you're not saying that isn't the case in the NHS, right, okay. are you? So that's all right to do. Yeah. You're not, again, you're not misleading people. You, you could put, if you want, you've got a hand-picked team of people who work with you hand in glove in every single knee operation you do. Well, phrase it however you like. Yeah, again, it's all true. Continue to take care, you know, in the NHS, people see a different patient in clinic, a different group on the day we offer different patients. Yeah, so oh. instead of saying continuity of care, it's yeah. saying, you know, the problems in the NHS are this, you see a different doctor, blah, 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 different nurse, different this, you know, you never see the same, people complain they never see the same patient twice. Mm. That's not how we work privately, that's not how I work with my team. You can be guaranteed of seeing me whenever you, every step of the way. Mm. Basic stuff, you know, nice environment, this and that, all the stuff that you know are the reasons, and you can get treated on the day of your choice, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the, the benefits of private care that you know. Stick them on the page, mm. yeah? So now, any visitor to your website gets all the information, so, you're, so here what you're doing is, you're helping your NHS patients a great deal because mm. they've got access to this information. You do, you, I mean, we have, for all our conditions, because I've helped write a lot of them, uh, information leaflets yep. from the NHS. So I couldn't really give them a leaflet, my own personal leaflet, because that, we can't do that, and in most NHS stuff you can't do that. There's got to be, Anything you give the patient in that yep. clinic has to be approved by the government board. That's fine. So you could say, I suppose you could say it's on my website, but it's also on the hospital website. Mm. So I just doesn't matter. So you could. I mean, if anyone said, I, I, what I would do is I would say, look, you know, here's the usual thing. Here's what happened. Talk to them about it. So yeah. here's the patient information read. If you want any more, there's more on my website. Just yeah. Google Paul Pavlov yeah. and have a look there. Yeah, a significant proportion of people will do that. Yeah. They will go to your website. I'm not saying therefore everyone thinks well, a lot it's private. Of already, to be fair, the NHS patients that wanted to see you have looked you up and been mm. to your website. So right. actually having a lot of people say, oh, oh yes, I saw, I saw that you were in Auckland or I saw that you did refuse to see right. me from your website or something like, something right. like that. Right. And all you've got there is a tab saying, why go private? And then at the bottom of that, how, how to do so. Mm. Yeah. So it's, and it's... What would you call it? Why go private or yeah. benefits of private care? Whatever. Why go private is simple, isn't it? And it's, 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 it's better communication, isn't it? But it doesn't matter um, as long as people understand it. Right. Now, so that's... Oh, let me turn this off just in case it should ring. Let's just have a, any questions on that? I forgot to turn it off. Okay. This, so we talked about structure, improving the response of your website, getting more patients in. Now I talked about content. Those things go hand in hand. This will make a massive difference as well. I promise you, okay? The next thing is something quite, I think is quite exciting. Mm -hmm. and that's called remarketing. Now, the sad fact, and it is a fact, and I think it is quite sad, that um, is that no matter how good your website is, the vast number of patients will still leave and not do anything. Okay? You are not going to get 80, 90%, 60% of people saying, let's go see this guy. It's not happening, okay? It will be, you know, I can't give you numbers because it's just not possible to do that, but we're talking, you know, 
a percent, two percent, fractions of a percent, we're talking very low numbers, mm. right? So what you've got is something like this. This is what half a percent looks like, okay? One red bloke and all those other blue blokes. And when you look at it that way, it's all a bit scary and depressing, okay? Um, we can improve upon that by talking about structure and content as we have, but the, the proportions will still be a vast number of people leaving and not taking action. So what can we do about that? There's something called remarketing. Has anyone ever heard of that? I've heard of it, but I don't really right. understand it. Okay, you will all have seen in action, even if you've never heard of it. Now, imagine you've gone to Amazon, you want to buy a pair of walking boots, for example, or a hard drive, or a TV, or whatever it is, and you're surfing around and fiddling around, and you think, oh, well, I'll, I'll come back later, or I don't want, I can't find one I like, or, or you put it in your basket and change <laughs> it, whatever it might be. Then later that day, or next week, or sometime, you then go to the Daily Mail website, BBC website, FT, somewhere, you're surfing somewhere else, YouTube. And then there's an advert there from Amazon about the same walking boots you were looking at. Yeah? yeah. That is remarketing in action. And that is enormously powerful. And here is an example. So this is, what's this, a BBC, was it? Daily Mail. No, this is the independent, in, no, no, the independence web page. I was surf, surfing around some boots, and then a couple of days later, I ended up on the independence page, and there's an advert from Amazon for walking boots. Yeah. So hang on, let's see if I can get that picture up a bit better. Where is it? Where is it? No, it's not that one. Ah, having a brain failure. No, just above the. Can anyone see it? That's it. Yeah. Not that one. That's it. Thank you. My God. Can you have a look at my eyes later? <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah. So there it is. Yeah. So an advert for walking boots here. Now, these adverts are free. And if I've been to your website, as clearly I should do, to have my eyes looked at, because clearly I'm going half blind and I've looked around for cataracts or whatever it might be, see how you could help me, but I've gone off, I've not taken action for one reason or another. And a little later, either that day or some other time later, there's an advert there saying, come and see me about your eyes. So that's free, you don't that's have to pay free. for that. I'll, I'll explain how it works in one moment. Yeah. Or I was looking at a piece of software called Kajabi and which site was I at here? MSN. So look, these are big name websites, not like shitty little pokey sites, yeah? The Independent, MSN, Google, um, not Google, um, YouTube. These are big sites, yeah? Mm. So I was looking about a piece of software, um, and there's a story here on the MSN website about somebody busting a pub or something. And there's an advert here at the top, and down the side about this advert about this software called Kajabi. This is remarketing. And the point and magic of remarketing is what it does is it redirects, is it scoops up those people, those 99, 199 people here that left and didn't do anything. And now they wander off somewhere else. They see your ad reminding them about you. So worried about chest pain, worried about shortness of breath, whatever it is. Blind, got a dicky knee can't pee straight, do you see what I mean? Whatever it is, picture of you smiling out there, whatever content you want, but I don't think you can use video, um, although there are video adverts, but let's just keep it simple. The point is they're reminded about you, these other 199 people, and the advert is free. Now that advert only costs you anything if somebody clicks on it, yeah. and then it'll depend on the, uh, so it's usually the pence to a pound, stuff, a small amount of money, they click on that and then they get taken back to your website, to the page that they left. So from the walking boots, they go back to the Amazon walking boots <coughs> page. Yeah. You don't want them back in your home page, you want them back where they came from. So, you know, hernia lump in the groin, they go back to the lump in the groin page. And that's called like the landing page, is it? Or that's a landing page. Yeah. Okay, and that, that is remarketing. And the magic of that is 
that it is the only way at present of scooping up these people who visited and didn't do anything. Now, I can't give you numbers about how well that works. It does work. It has to be done well. It's not good adverts and all the rest of it. Um, and it, because it depends so much upon you and your, your advert, how well you're using it and so on. But these adverts can be served up to 180 days after the visit. There's no real sense in having your ads running that long because if somebody's got a pain in the knee, the chances are they'll see somebody within the next few weeks if, if they're going to. Mm. So a couple of weeks or whatever, it's worth testing. But remarketing is something that all of you should be doing once you fixed your website because otherwise you're paying money for them to come back to a crap website, you see what I mean? And they're still not going to be so likely to do anything. You, well, you see what I mean, yeah? Yeah, I mean, have, make a guess, you know. It does, there's no right or wrong answer. I'll say 180 days, so what, six months is, <laughs> is probably too long, isn't it? Four months is probably too long. Two months may be too long, so maybe four, six weeks, eight weeks, I don't know. Think about it yourself. On the other hand, with eye problems, Doris might grumble on with her cataracts for a long time or her daughter who's been surfing for her. Mm -hmm. So it might be worthwhile to leave it longer then. It's a judgment call. There's no right or wrong. You have to test it and see what gives you the best results. And when you test it, if you find that, you know, if you leave it for longer than six weeks, you don't get any improvement in results, then just back it off. You see um, what I mean? The, the point you said about or her daughter or whoever surfing, because I was thinking, you know, this is fine, but a lot of my patients are in their 80s, they right. don't go online. But of course, they always come in when they're <laughs> Daughter. Right. And this is why Always. we're talking about Facebook advertising very shortly now um, and AdWords and all sorts of stuff. The point is you need to think about who, not just your patient, but how, how are they going to come in? How, how are they going to get to see you? So again, you know, Doris or Edith, they're 85 years old, they've not been surfing around online. No. That doesn't mean you can't reach them. No. Yeah? So worried about your mother, is she getting a bit frail and short of breath? might be a brilliant advert targeted at, well, if, if, you know, if Doris is, say, 75, for the sake of example, let's take away 25 years where we, you know, she had her first child. So if you've got, you're aiming at a woman, usually, but maybe a man, between the age of, uh, you know, 45 to 55, 45 to 60 years old, they see an ad saying, worried about your parents, shortness of breath or something. Yeah? Mm. That's just massive, but nice. Yes. And this is why, you get, you, these, you know, as I say, it all seems very simple. Yeah, well, just do a little bit of magic and it works yeah. there. Yes and no, because it gets involved. And again, the more you look into it, the, the more it's, it's actually a lot of fun because you can tweak a few things and see some massive changes. Yeah? So my friend example I, I mentioned yesterday about the... Um, with his architectural design company, glass company. Mm -hmm. He came up with two different web pages, sent traffic to one, mm -hmm. had, some uh, you know, had, had some customers, quite a few clicks and so on. Um, changed it to another page, which actually looked much better, much more attractive, bombed totally. Total silence. We thought, mm -hmm. this has got to be a mess up. Tried it back, tried it back, and it was the page. But the page looked fine. Mm -hmm. But by tweaking it, he has instantly made his business a significant amount of money. And the same will apply to you guys. But as again, you have to start from pos a position of best practice. Mm -hmm. You know, start from something which is most likely to work and then tweak things. Mm -hmm. And when you go from, so again, these aren't, these are just guidance. I just put, put up a graphic here. This isn't to say this is what will happen. So you go from, you know, a half a percent who picks up the phone to book an appointment to an order of magnitude more and it's mm -hmm. unpredictable, you have to test it and try it and you see. So now you still see the vast majority of people leaving, that's inevitable, okay? But far more people are responding and picking up the phone, yeah? Now, let's do, up, do something else very clever because we talked about on your websites about most wanted response, that you probably thought that was a very odd thing for me to say yesterday. Um, but the, the question is, what do you want somebody who comes to your website to do? And 
as I say, it sounds a bit stupid. Well, I want to pick up a bloody phone. That's the whole point, don't you? So yes, you want to see them, but picking up the phone is not the only way they can contact you. And there are obvious problems with picking up the phone because first of all, as we said, most people are surfing out of hours. They're surfing late at night when they're worried. They're not surfing about their uh, rectal bleeding or their lump in their groin at work very probably for obvious reasons. They're going to be looking at it in the evening. So we talked about, well, they can pick up the phone. It can be a 24-hour answer to phone service. That's fine. The trouble is picking up the phone is actually very, a very threatening thing to ask somebody to do. Might not sound it, but you're saying, I'm, I'm worried about this, and you're fiddling around looking. As we know, people put off seeing doctors as, for all sorts of reasons and none. Yeah? So actually getting them to pick up the phone and say, hi, can I put, what, you know, what is the only thing they can do? If they pick up their phone, they have to say, can I come and see you? Mm -hmm. So that's a very big ask. It's like an enzymatic energy hump, yeah? It's a very big ask to get over that hump. So what you've got to do is somehow try and get that hump down. And you get that down, first of all, by talking like a human being, not scaring the pants off them that they might have cancer, even if they very likely might have. Got a lump in the breast that's, you know, they're getting peau d'orange or whatever. You know, yes, they might very well have cancer, but you don't, you've got to sort of actually make it, uh, may well not be, but you need to get seen. You see what I mean? You've got to throttle back. But you've got to get them over that energy hump. And one way is by, as I say, seem, seem like a human being, talking the way they understand, coming across as a normal Joe, a normal guy who's not some scary, you know, threatening consultant looking down at the top of his specs at you and all the rest of it, yeah? But that hump is still there. Picking up the phone is challenging. So what else can we do? We can invite them to fill in the contact us form. That works. I would, I, 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 my guess is that picking up the phone is actually easier than sitting there typing their phone, typing their details. But the other thing we can do is something called email marketing. Now you've all been on my list um, of consultants for varying periods of time. <coughs> But that is how I run my business, and it works very, very well for me, and it works very, very well for consultants that I've worked with. And what I would suggest to all of you, I'll tell you about how it works now. This is a, a, one of the advanced strategies that, we're talk that we'll be talking about, <coughs> is that you first of all get your, get, your, you know, get your house in order in the ways that we talked about, systems and this and that, the website and all the rest of it and you consider email marketing, and if you don't consider it now, you can do it at, consider that at a later date. Mm -hmm. But this has this is huge ramifications, I promise you. Because first of all, leaving, what you want people to do, so let's backtrack a little bit. What you're asking people to do, instead of pick up the phone, you leave that as a constant option anyway, because some people will. But you also invite them to give you their email details, their contact details, so that you can get in touch with them in an ongoing way. And first of all, the way you do that is by offering them an ethical bribe, something they want, something that's helpful and of value to them. So, Paul's case, that might be, um, you know, had a sporting injury, hurt your knee, get my free report about, you know, diagnosing, treating, looking after your injured knee. Yeah? Cataracts, you know, worried about your vision, get my free report, click here, get my free report about you know, the causes of visual problems, whatever. Um, cardiac, uh, waterworks, you know, having difficulty with your waterworks, worried about your PSA, click here for my free report. We can all do this, mm -hmm. yeah? And what happens is they go to your website, and if you, uh, I mentioned yesterday, this is exactly what I do on my site, so I'll show you my site anyway. What's a free report? Right, sorry. So basically, you've got um, what you, you've got to. What you're trying to do is to give them something that's of value to them in exchange for their contact details. So you create basically another patient information sheet. And again, I believe in reuse. Reuse. You know, you've got, uh, I think this is a green approach to your website, yeah, and a green approach to all your content. I don't know. It's all digital, so of course it's not green. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, all that stuff you put on your website about uh, grommets, tonsils, whatever, um, circumcisions, prostate, whatever it is, that page about the condition you, you're trying to get people in for, you just rewrite that and put it into a, a Word document. 
maybe put, make a few changes. It could be very much the same as that page. Chuck it into a Word document. You can tell Word to, to publish it as a PDF. Now you've got a PDF. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what happens is you've got software in the background. When they click on a button, so I'll show you on my site. As we said yesterday, I don't ask people to call me. I don't want people to call me. There's no way here you have a contact to me at all. There's a form. I think there's a form, yeah. But there's nothing else. What I want people to do is to click here. And if you see it turn, the, the arrows turn into a hand. So this is clickable. So what I'm saying is, look, for you guys to pick up the phone and say, Deb wants some help in my private practice, that's a huge ask. Yeah? People won't do that in large part. Okay? But what I'm saying is, look, you know, don't do that. Why don't you just click here and get some free information? Yeah? So here's 31 tips to grow your private practice. What they do is they click on that, a pop up box appears, and I'm asking for your first name, last name, email address, and for me, it's relevant what your specialty is. Okay? You put in your details, press the button, and you get this free report, the free tips, all this stuff that you've all been through, you've all received from me, all right? Um, and I, offer, I give you uh, a couple of extra bonuses, so there's a couple of audio reports, MP3 files, and this, that, and the other stuff that you can take away to grow your private practice. The point is you're getting free information. Now what happens is this is all in, an, a, this is run by an, a piece of automated software in the cloud, all right? So it's not as if this reaches, gets filled in, comes to my desk, or my PA's desk or any of my staff, and they say, oh, Paul Pavley wants this, okay, t -t -t and then they send it over, and then there's a load of faff around there. It's all automated. So I've written the report, it's there, I've written it once. In this case, I've written 31 tips to grow your private practice. I've written that once. So it takes work, it's not like just magic easy, but it's once it's done, it's like writing a book or producing a record, and once it's done once, it's done. Yeah, whether you sell it a million times or give it away a million times, it's free, yeah? So the work is done once. It goes up to some automated piece of software. So you submit your details and then straight away, or within, you know, we're talking email communication time, so within 30 seconds or whatever, you get that report, you get that information in your inbox. So Doris, or Julie, who's worried about Auntie Doris's eyesight, now gets this report landing in an inbox as a PDF about the whys and wherefores and ins and eyes and outs of problems with the eyesight. And you, she's got that which is useful. She can print it off. And at the end of that, you also add at the end of the report that you've created, you know, don't put off something along the lines of, and which you should also have on your website, by the way. You know, don't, if you're worried about any aspect of your health, don't put off getting seen, yeah? See your GP, see another consultant, or pick up the phone and call me or email me and get you seen right away. And I commend to you, as I said yesterday, about saying, see somebody, even if it's not me. Because it's an ethical thing to do, it's the right thing to do, it's good for people, and it also makes you look good. Yeah, because people think, oh, actually I think I will call this guy. It's a subtle thing, but do you see what I'm saying? And you've got that on your, on, on your free report as well. Now, this is A-level stuff. I don't want you to think where you've got to rush off and do it. So, but, and then this one, you, you, you don't send it all at once, do you? You send the email every few yeah. days. But this, this yeah. we'll move on to that now. Can we get a quick question? Yep. You've got FRCS on your after name. Yep. Should we be putting a letter to after name? Can do. This? Is it something that you're you can do if you want. Or? It I depends. I think it's a good that. idea for a so surgeon. So about the authority bit that you mentioned. It's a good idea for a surgeon because you know there's no doctor in the front. But a surgeon could easily put doctor. You just leave your doctor. For a physician, you'll have doctor anyway. I think it's a moot point. If you want to put it, by all means, put it. Um, I've just been taking stuff as we're talking, and I've talked about. So have you ever injured your knee playing sport at work? Do you have knee pain and, in, and injured in a particular way? Well, if so, you may have. It's like it's a it's crucial ligament. Yep. Um, it's not always easy to diagnose ligament injury. Uh, it can seem to be easy for your doctor initially, but you are, are having ongoing problems. It, it's worth coming to see, and I've written me for a thorough assessment and MRI scan to find out what's causing it. So watch for our eyes. It's worth coming to see 
I would keep it a bit more general. I'd say it's it's always worthwhile seeing a specialist. Yeah. So it's, first, of all, first of all, it's very important to get seen, and it's always worthwhile seeing a specialist. So don't put it off. See a GP. And I, 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 I would probably left the me out. I would have said, see somebody, a knee specialist, like myself, or something like that. Uh, because if you put me, it's just a little bit, you don't want to be, it's, it's a judgment thing. Yeah. Some people might say that's pushy, others not. Mm. I don't know. To me, it sounds a bit pushy. So it is get rid of the me. It was always worthwhile seeing a specialist for a thorough assessment. Something like that. Because I noticed on, on you when you said at the end of the report, you said either see another consultant or a GP or me. You put me at the end, didn't you? Um, I, I might might have. I didn't. Yeah. I'm think. I'm think. I'm just thinking on my feet yeah. here. But so mm -hmm. I, I, less push the back. Again, this is detail. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is this is minutiae. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about them. Think of the big thing we're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The big thing we're talking about is is writing to, is communicating to people like a human being, not mm -hmm. as a, an academic robot. The big thing is answering their questions. The big thing is treating them as human beings. The big thing is encouraging them to make a phone call. Uh, the big thing here is saying, well, there's something we can do that's not a phone call. So they've given you their email address. What do you, what do, you do then? Now, what you do with, if this is the number of people who pick up the phone, and again, this I'm just trying to give you a visual representation of numbers. I'm not trying to say there's you know there's one in two hundred there, and they're not turning into fifteen or eighteen out of two hundred. Yeah, I'm just trying to give you a visual example of what we're talking about, so you can see. So if that's the kind of number of proportion of people who will pick up the phone, then the number of proportion of people who will give you their email address is like this. It's again orders of magnitude more. And what the process is, the, just the big thing, the process that happens, they've get, I've sent, you've sent me your um, free report about prostate difficulties, prostate hyperplasia, whatever it is, um, raised PSA, and you're talking in sensible terms about what that might mean. Excuse me. You then send me an email saying, Dear Dev, I hope you got my report, I hope you found it useful. You know, it can be very worrying when you're worried about your health, blah, 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 etc. I hope you found it useful. Um, you know, and then some, so um, I hope you found it useful. Um, I just wanted to reassure you that most of the time, a raised PSA, if that's what they're asking about, um, is nothing to worry about, but it does need to be seen. If you do need any help, pick up the phone or just reply to this email. So something very gentle. Then another, you send them another email a, at a space, a point in time afterwards. We'll worry about that in a minute. Um, saying, um, Dear, G dear, dear Dev, how are you getting on? Um, hope you have seen, taken some advice about prostate, blah, blah, blah. Did you know recent research shows something, nothing, nothing abstruse, but um, you know, prostate problems are very common. Did you know that, uh, was it Stephen Fry has been diagnosed with prostate cancer? So let's just assume he, he's, he, ha he hasn't been diagnosed with prostate cancer. He's, got, he's had a TERP because of benign percent hyperplasia. Let's just say that. So even, even famous people like Stephen Fry, Fry have problems with their prostate, but mm. If he can get seen and sorted out and get better, that's really good. And he was kind of a gentle thing about it, yeah? Again, we're talking gently about the topic. Then he sent another email a little later on. Again, gentle things. At the end of it, he's saying, look, if you're still worried about your symptoms, you're still symptomatic, I do hope you've seen somebody. Um, I'm very happy to see if you want to see me. Here's how you do it. Click here to reply or pick up the phone and call Julie Jones, my secretary. She'll be delighted to help you, that kind of thing. And at the bottom of all these emails, of course, there's always a button which it says unsubscribe. Mm -hmm. So if they do get pissed off, they've changed their mind or whatever, they can do that. And that's always there. So you send them a number of emails spaced apart in a certain manner. Um, I would personally, as you know, I send out daily emails. Everyone always says you can't send out daily emails because people get pissed off and leave they'll hate you and you're spamming them and all the rest of it. It is clearly bollocks. You guys are all here. I have hundreds of people that I contact with daily emails. People do leave, of course, yeah? But the point is your opinion. I didn't believe it when I first started it, but your opinion doesn't matter. My opinion doesn't matter. The facts show this works. How do you know your emails are going into their inbox and not their junk box? Don't, that's, that's really detailed, don't worry about it. Mm. Don't 
don't worry about it. Um, there are ways, there are means, there is a lot of complexity there, don't worry about it. Now, to give you an example, right, so this is what you do, you send out either daily emails every couple of days, whatever, that's a complete pain, how do you know that Dave there is on, he's had his first email today and then you've got yours, you're at your sequence four and you're this, that's a nightmare. You can't do it sensibly. So the part of this automated software is it does it for you. So the emails that you receive from me, the first 31 are all automated. I've written them all, I've programmed them into this onboard, onto this um, uh, software and it just goes out. So you join today, you join next week, somebody else has joined three weeks ago. So at totally different points the sequence, the computer is handling it all. I don't have to do any of it. At the end of that sequence when they come off, then I s they join my daily emails which I write every day and then that goes out, so I don't send them out to everybody like his one is another. Is they, I, I click it once and it goes out to everybody when they're at the appropriate point in the sequence. Do you see what I mean? So when they've come off the end, they're now on the daily bits. The daily, the daily dailies as opposed to the automated dailies, if that makes sense. So I write my emails. So the emails, you, once you've had my tips from me, you get the daily email that I've written that day, which has gone out to you. Okay. For you guys, I would suggest you have an email sequence which you decide upon. It might be 10 emails, it might be 14, it might be eight. I would suggest sending them daily, okay? 